Hi, Hi. it's Bert. I'm Sean. This it's is... a pastory time. Pastory time vlog. Pastory time vlog. Yeah. yeah we're going to vlog today and tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, but like two separate vlogs. Yeah. Because we end up, they end up being quite They'll long. It'll be too long. Yeah. We can't stop us. We've got so much to say. So much going on. So much going yeah. on, isn't it, Bert? Big time. Yeah. Um. So we thought the reason we're doing a vlog. A couple of weeks ago. Oh yeah. Um. I read Plain Bad Heroines, which I enjoyed, and um. We went to a from the comfort of the living room. We went to the uh, launch of it in Gaze the Word. Yeah. So Emily M. Danforth was interviewed, and you could put your questions in. So I asked, oh, and this book, in case you don't know, it's got lots of references to kind of horror movies and kind of slashers and sort of vintage horror, right. um, like sort of 70s, 80s horror. Okay. And um, so I asked a question, yeah. which was, uh, what is your favourite 80s slasher? Because what was your favourite? Because I told uh, Emily that my favourite was um, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Freddy's Revenge. Yeah, so I love that one. Yeah. So luckily she loved it too. Yes. Um, so I, she answered. And we've got a little yeah. clip. Well, it... um, what's your favorite '80s slasher? Uh, the person <laughs> is '90s on. Uh, sorry, is Nightmare on Elm Street too? Oh yes. Um, yes. <laughs> um, choice. So it's it's called April Fool's Day. Uh, it has the totally unfair uh, claims, it's, it's the moniker essentially that sometimes, some some viewers, as the, the slasher movie that killed slasher movies, is not earned at all, um, in my opinion. But it combines like all of my favorite excesses of 80s movies, like very cheesy, a bunch of friends are going to spring break on an island kind of cheesy movies, and just, you know, pop polo collars and Walkman, and very 80s, very 80s feeling, with the slasher movie. And then a lot of meta winking. And that's why that's why a lot of slasher folks don't like it. I can't give anything away. But it's sort of like a slasher movie meets Clue set on an island, like the Brat Pack kind of 80s. Um, and I love it. April Fool's Day. So that's a hands down my favorite. Like in one movie, it's all the stuff that I love. So, yeah. So her favorite slasher is April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day. Yeah, so we're going to watch that tonight. Yeah, and it's been one I've wanted to watch for ages. Yeah, and there's also a remake. Which we love. Um, <laughs> do you remember when we did that, uh, what was the... My Bloody, My Bloody, Bloody Valentine. Valentine. Where we watched the original, and then we watched the Jensen Ackles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awful remake. Yeah. So um, actually, I have no idea when the remake is from, do you? No. No, so it's an 80s... Recent-ish. Oh, is it? Okay. Or yeah, well, 2000s-ish. I don't know who's in any of these. Uh, no, we... No. No. So that's what we're doing, and it. Um... So yeah, we're gonna watch tonight. We're gonna watch the original. And tomorrow we're gonna watch the remake. Um, thanks to Emily M. Danforth. Thank you, Emily. But what else are we gonna be doing whilst we're watching the first uh, movie, Shani? So there's a rumor <laughs> going round <laughs> that we might be getting takeaway vegan chicken. There's a new vegan chicken place that's opened up in Cardiff. Um, which is a big deal for Shani, who is a big vegan chicken aficionado. I love vegan chicken. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've been like a vegan, but I've been vegetarian for since I was like thirteen, and I don't think I've ever actually eaten that kind of like I've never had a chicken, but I've probably like eaten a, chicken, like, like a chicken a, wing or something. yeah, I've yeah. never eaten anything like a chicken nugget, yeah, or anything like that. So yeah, I don't I have no idea if it tastes the same or yeah, I just like, like how it I tastes. like vegan chicken. Yeah, and I didn't really like chicken, when I, <laughs> so I just avoided it. So it's a whole new world um, of chicken for us. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna uh, do a takeaway, which is also just a big <laughs> maybe. Anxiety-inducing event for Shani, who's <laughs> not used to having takeaways and has a bit of a panic around them. <laughs> but this will be Shan's second ever takeaway in her life. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it might not happen. I think it, like well, they don't have food or something, and then we're, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. Okay. That's the plan. Takeaway vegan chicken and April Fool's Day. 
Because it's coming up to April. This is like, yes, the other reason why we're... we wanted to watch it and thought it'd be a good time, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, right, so to... rather than sort of midweek, whenever April the 1st is, we're going to do it over the weekend. The ...cultural norms and, like, knows what they are talking about because they came from that background speaking to you. Like, she talks, for example, about how it's the norm in a lot of black households and families to speak to each other really harshly. And... listening acid trip this is by joseph lanza and it's an elevator ride through 60s psychedelic pop this is great i am yeah a third of the way in so far and i'm reading um last night at the telegraph club by melinda Lowe, and i'm reading this with um, heather from soggy expert book nerd um i'm yeah we've been buddy reading it this week i've been a bit behind and we've both been a bit behind on what we set ourselves I think a busy bit... work week. Though, yeah, it ended up being a bit of a busy yeah. week, so um, I'm not working today, so I can I might be able to finish it today. And then the other two books that I'm hoping to kind of dip into this weekend are Love and Rage, Lamrod Owens, Tag Loads. Um, this is the Anna Hatter book club, and I've read a bit, but I need to get back into it. And he's also doing like a, a Sanger kind of thing on Sunday. On Sunday night, yeah, yeah, which I will link. Which Sunday night for us, but yeah. it's probably Sunday morning for a lot of... yeah. 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 And then I've also got this from Embodying the Yoga Soup Clothes, hoping to read a little bit of that too. And do you have something else to about So I'm currently reading um, A Man of Double Deed by uh, Leonard Daventry. This is, look at this, uh, what is this thing? It's a metal mole. Can we just... It's an evil mole. Let's discuss what that is. Is that like an alien or a crab or a mole? Are those like eyes yeah. at the top there? Yeah, and yeah. these are his little hands? Yeah. He hasn't turned up yet, in it? <laughs> um, this is a mid-60s sci-fi novel about a telepath and his two female companions in the future. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, there's a, uh, an issue going on with the youth of the future. They're starting to kill people um, just for no reason, just um, indiscriminate violence amongst young people. And... Uh, Klaus Komen, the telepath, key man, has been called in to uh, investigate and to uh, help set up a war council or something like that. <laughs> uh, I'm actually enjoying it, weirdly. <laughs> Most of the time, these books are just like such a slog. And uh, yeah, this I'm really enjoying. Who would have thought it? Um, I was, I, you know, I kind of picked it up because I thought maybe it had like horror elements because of this gross thing. But no, just about telepaths. It's an exciting and thought-provoking evocation of the 21st century. Intelligent and literate to an above-average degree. <laughs> Guys? So yeah. they're talking about you? Yeah. Yeah.
all my library books that I just got out. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Which I just got out uh, this week. Um, I'm quite excited about them. It's a good, it's a good pile, I think. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm. Yeah. So okay, and I might add when I finish my other book this weekend, I might read one of these as well. So the one that I was kind of most interested in reading, um, which you know, happy the library got it, is um, Patricia Lockwood's. No one is talking about this. I it's it's a lot smaller than I thought. I thought it was going to be quite a big book. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested in it. I really liked Pristadi, her memoir, and I really liked her poetry book that um, that I read as well, Motherland, Fatherland, Homeland Sexuals. Um, so I really liked that too, and so I'm interested to read it. I've heard kind of a little bit of mixed um, things about it. Um, yeah. I won't go into any more than that. And then I feel like it's kind of a little bit linked. There's a fake account by Lauren Euler, which I've heard lots of people enjoying as well. So it's kind of one about this woman whose husband, um, she finds out that he's uh, an anonymous internet conspiracy theorist. So that's that one. So both kind of like online-y things. Uh, this I've had an order at the library for a while. So it's Chuck Paul next, The Invention of Sound. Um, also a little book. I'm, like, I'm kind of quite tempted to read this uh, really soon. So I read a lot of Chuck Palahniuk back in the day, but I haven't read any in ages. Um, and I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if I'd like them now or not. I'm kind of interested in Chuck. Are you interested in Chuck? Have you, you've read a couple, have you? I remember Chuck being good. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go. I've read like the earlier one. So I read... Fight Club, Survivor, Invisible Monsters, Choke, Lullaby. I read his Fugitives and Refugees, A Walk in Portland, which is like non-fiction. Mm, yeah. I think I read while working at the bookshop, like literally just mm. at work. Um, and yeah, and then also like the, uh, what's the really gross one? Haunted, is it? No. Yeah. Short story, doesn't it? Yeah, the short story yeah. one with a really gross short story. Anyway, there's a lot of information, but... I mean... When that short story came out, I was at uni, and um, it was a big talking point, wasn't it? Like, people were yeah. there throwing up reading it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it was even discussed in one of my art history classes at one point. Ah, okay. Yeah, as in, like, just as a chat in the class. Ah. Yeah. It's that, like, asking, so who's, the, who's read it? The short story Guts, isn't it? Guts. Yeah, and it was almost like, remember that cat lady story that came out quite recently? Yes. But every now and again a short story comes out and it becomes yeah. a talking point. Yeah, yeah. And that was huge at the time. Um, I was working in a um, bookstore mm -hmm. at that point and um, me and Rob, I think, had read it. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, <laughs> me and Rob read it. And, uh, but I, I'm sure I've, said, I've talked about this before, but I do remember I was reading it on a bus and yeah. I was just reading it. And then I had to just kind of go, and then just sort of look out the window for a bit. <laughs> for a bit. Hmm. I think I'm quite good at kind of gross stuff yeah. in, in books. Like yeah. I'm not too. It was really gross, and it did make me kind of, you know, have a little pause. But I, I think I'm quite good at sort of yeah. gross things. I'm not too anyway. But it stuck with you though. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. And just the experience of reading it, which you don't often remember. Exactly. Do you? Yeah. The other two books I've got are Chestnut Man by Soren Sveitstrup, um, which is... So he apparently... I don't know if this is his first novel, but he wrote the... He was the script writer for, for The Killing, mm. which I didn't watch, but, you know. Um, and he wrote the screenplay for Joe Nesbo's The Snowman. Mm. We saw... Who is it? Violet, who's a channel I recently... Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the full name, but um, I'll link it, and she was saying how great it was. I don't think it's like 100% my kind of thing, but I really like, um, you know, kind of Scandinavian books. And I like, I you know, it's kind of when it kind of a little bit horror adjacent. Yeah. Is he made of chestnuts? Um, I think it's like there's like a, a murder hmm. and then they, he hangs like a little chestnut man above the body. Oh, okay, so he's not a chestnut man. He's not, well, he makes little chestnut men, but he's not literally a chestnut man, no. Do you remember when we had chestnut fever? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Bert. I'm sure these like, I feel like yeah. we're just telling the same. <laughs> we, we had bad chestnuts. So we, we had, we got food poisoning from eating chestnuts, which is like the, yeah. 
weirdest man. Yeah. I've had food poisoning twice in my life. Mm. Um, one was like eating roast, like roasted peppers from a jar. Mm. And, th- and that was that was worse, I think. Was it? Oh, I don't know. They were both mm. pretty bad. And then this was like from eating like dodgy chestnuts. Yeah. They were like vacuum packed. Yeah. And I remember opening them. Yeah. And thinking, ah, there's something a bit weird here. Yeah. And then it was like, oh no, I think they're okay. No, it's two days in bed. We so, really? Uh, Shani's just going, oh God, oh God, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Even now it's the chestnut man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he okay. tried to kill us. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. going to be scary. That would be a good way to kill people though, wouldn't it? I chestnut guess. Like with chestnut poison. <laughs> <laughs> and the other book I've got is The Run Up For Girls Are Gone by Felicity McLean. A smart, classy thriller that blazes of the heat of Australia. <laughs> it's like a really kind of weird tribute. Yeah. Set in Australia. Yeah. I, could have said. <laughs> I know, I didn't see that. Yeah, that was Fiona Mosley who at Elmet said that. So it, it, apparently some kind of Virgin Suicides esque. Are you going to do thing? that for Aussie April? Oh. oh. I think you should. Come on. Yeah. So it says a compulsive note perfect debut for fans of the Virgin Suicides and Picnic at Hanging Rock. Mm. I am a fan of both of those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's Australian then, I guess. Yes, 1992, hot summer of isolated suburb in Australia. We'll save this for next month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, already content this vlog is just going to go on forever, isn't it? That's all right. It's all right. People like long vlogs. So over the last few weeks, um, some really nice things have, have happened. Uh, one of which is um, Sean got me this mug. Um, in, in my new mug, as well as having tea and coffee, I have been enjoying the new Forager um, peppermint tea. Um, we got a few teas by Forager, didn't we, Shani? We got the first one in one of the Macabre boxes. Did That's we? That's how we saw that then. What flavour was that? So the first one was the peppermint and peppermint. green, which is what you've got. Yeah, so this is really good, especially um, as I've been a little bit, I've had a little bit of a cold, I think. And I've been a bit, a bit run down and I think exhausted. And that's the peppermint tea is really invigorating. It's just delicious. And it's been really good for sore throats and stuff like that. Um, it just tastes really kind of um, fresh, like real um, peppermint. And then we had one which is a bit more kind of berry, I think. Yeah, we? We're out of that. and I'm a fan of berry teas. <laughs> Which you might not suspect uh, of me, but um, why would yeah. people not suspect that? Because of my fruit um, a- a phobia. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, cheers, you guys. Here's to new mugs with mushrooms on. Um, I I don't know if this is a uh, an aesthetic, but um, I've come across the term goblin core. And uh, I, I believe things like these kind of mushrooms and um, cute little snails and any sort of, if you think of sort of Labyrinth, the movie, um, and, you know, like uh, elves, things like that. I Maybe maybe I'm Goblin Core. Yeah. I think this, this little blanket is kind of Goblin Core. It goes with my Goblin Core mug. I'm going to insert some footage here of my latest batch of homemade tempeh, um, which is, I think, the best batch I've made so far. Would you agree, Shani? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, the ones at the beginning were really good as yeah. well, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. And we've also, we can link to the recipe. Yeah. Because we've got a, a vlog yes, where we yeah, show we'll, how to make it. We will link to the recipe. But as you can see, it's sort of packed in nice and tight. It's a nice thick um, uh, slab of tempeh. And... The mycelium has like bound it, binded it really nicely. It's just, and it tastes delicious, of course. But yeah, for some reason, the last couple of batches I made um, didn't turn out 100%. They were fine. They they were a little bit damp. And I think um, the main issue that I, I had is that I wasn't drying off the soybeans um, properly before um, adding the the sort of the powder, the sort of mycelium. Um, so, and also at one point I added the vinegar 
too late in the process as well. Um, but yeah, I think I've nailed it now. So I've also run out of the uh, powder, so I'm gonna have to order some more. Um, but yeah, it's just been absolutely delicious. And yeah, I revived my love of tempeh all over again. It's a bit like kind of making bread yeah. or something yeah. like that. It's, yeah, and there's they, variables, aren't there? They advise an incubator. Yeah. Um, but we've just got like a, a like a what's it called? An immersion cupboard, yeah. an, uh, immersion heater, air in cupboard. Which turns out that other countries don't have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think like which a... means, I mean, I remember when I was little, my mum used to sort of rise dough in the air in cupboard. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do as well. So I have like really fond um, feelings towards air in cupboards. <laughs> But I think some people have like proving drawers. Proving so I feel drawers, if they right. have a proving drawer, they could probably put there. Try it in your proving drawer. <laughs> so yeah, recently we watched, um, Sean's been really watching lots of videos by Isabel Page. And recently we watched one where she was also making homemade tempeh. She makes everything homemade. It's just like so inspiring. She's brilliant. Sean went for a massive phase of watching van life videos and that sort of <laughs> eased into sort of cabin life. Um, so yeah, she's great. Been loving her channel. And the other videos, I mean, we watch loads of videos and we love them all, but the other videos that have really sort of struck a chord with me recently have been Sage's videos um, in which Sage writes poetry. Um, and it just follows their whole process of, um, and challenges of like writing a certain amount of poems per day. Um, and yeah, obviously for me, stuff like that is really like, it's motivational. So it gets me sort of rethinking in that sort of frame of mind again. So um Sage is so great, and I just I just love their videos. So yeah, the the poetry videos have been uh, just great to watch. And yeah, I've uh, I've said that I would contribute uh, my uh, kind of maybe a video or a short vlog at some point about my process, writing process, or you can watch me writing some poems, I guess, um, if that ever happens. About a month ago, I planted um, some cornflowers outside because uh kind of you know early sp spring or pre-spring is the best time i think for, for cornflowers um and i completely have redone our pots outside so i kind of started from scratch got rid of everything that was in there because i have an aesthetic which i'm going for this year which is something i've always wanted to do which was just sort of rosemary and cornflowers and lavender so it was just a real kind of purpley lilac-y um pots area outside the flat here you can see there's some baby sprouts um already coming up so this is about a month after planting uh the cornflowers um i'm hoping they're gonna so we've had a few sort of sunny days recently and i'm hoping they're just gonna flourish look at them how cute and uh this next month as we come into april i will then plant some um lavender uh, I might grow them inside for a while and then put them outside. Uh, I think April is a good time for lavender. And yeah, I'm so excited about um, when they start to flower because just the colours are going to be so nice, I think, this summer. So that's a really exciting project that I've got on the go at the moment. Um, I also had my uh, birth chart reading um, last week, which is something that I've wanted to have done for a long time. And I kind of thought... Well, do you know what? Rather than sort of treating myself to books and CDs and stuff like that, which I usually do, um, I will get a birth chart reading. I DM'd um, on Instagram an account that I follow called uh, Unclouded Eye, and um, her name is Ash uh, Brooks, and I have followed her page for a long time because I just love the, her whole aesthetic. She uses really sort of, um, sort of vintage sci-fi 70s kind of... Uh, images on her page and her um, astrological uh, sort of updates beneath them are always just really fascinating and really cool. Um, so yeah, I kind of felt like a, a connection there. So I thought that she would be a really good person to do my reading. And yeah, and I received that um, like about four days later, I got a voice email from her half an hour going through my chart. And it was just great. It's been such a great experience. Um, I think we both now understand a little bit more about me than we did. Um, maybe we can be a bit more forgiving that, uh, that I'm clum clumsy <laughs> and um, a little bit on the slow side sometimes. But um, I won't go into sort of detail about what um, what she said. But one thing that has really sort of stood out is that um, 
I, so I am a Gemini and um, my moon is Sagittarius and I'm, we think, probably a Cancer rising because I don't have my exact birth date. Um, time. But, uh, birth time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, one thing that I did not know is that I had a lot of Taurus in my chart, like the, the most amount of um, bodies were under Taurus. Yeah, well, I didn't always resonate 100% as a Gemini, or I used to do more than I do now, let's say. So, anyway, she also does tarot readings, she does um, all sorts of different astrological readings of different lengths and things like that, so um, I highly recommend. She's She uh, lives in Portland, and she's just lovely. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm really grateful I did that. But anyway, those are some things that have been um, keeping me happy. Recently, um...